Good morning. It's Thursday morning, and we're going to read from Acts 8, 4 through 8. Now those who were scattered went from place to place, proclaiming the word. Philip went down to a city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. The crowds, with one accord, listened eagerly to what was said by Philip, hearing and seeing the signs that he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud shrieks, came out of many who were possessed, and many others who were paralyzed or lame were cured. So there was great joy in that city. Well, a couple things here. Um, It just told us that... um, The people scattered to the countryside, but the apostles remained in the city. So, Philip the apostle would have remained in the city, right? But in Acts chapter 6, when the original seven deacons were selected, one of them was named Philip. So, is this Philip the apostle, or is this Philip the deacon? I don't know. Nobody knows. It's not clear. They should have used their last names like David R. and David B., you know. But they didn't. What are we going to do? Well, let's suppose that this might have been Philip the Apostle. What we know about him, other than what's in the Gospels, which is about two verses, is that he went to north-central Turkey, place called Phrygia, P-H-R-Y-G-I-A, Phrygia. And in Phrygia, he was preaching the gospel and was eventually tortured and crucified. So, uh, and that was around the year 50, 55. So that's, we don't have much data about Philip. Which brings me to a point that I like to remember We have the preaching by these apostles and Peter and John and Paul. You know, they're the big guys. And we have these lesser apostles that we know did something faithful somewhere, but we really don't know what. And the people that they taught then went on and did things. And the people that they taught and on through the centuries. And so between the time of the apostles and our time, There are all these generations of people, something like, uh, I don't know, 50 or 80 generations maybe, um, of people who were faithful to the gospel, who heard heard the gospel and then repeated it to their children, the young people and others, and, and, and so passed it on. And so we have the testimony of the faithful witnesses in Scripture. We also have the testimony that's passed on by faithful witnesses that we know nothing about. We don't know their names. Um, My own ancestors in the south of France were um, Huguenots. And Huguenots were basically Calvinists uh, converted in the 1500s by someone Mm -hmm someone who studied with John Calvin and then went out into the countryside in the south of France and went from house to house probably at night so they wouldn't be caught and um, and and taught people the the reformed teaching of the of the church and so um, they became Huguenots now we don't know anything about who that was could have been somebody f- later famous. It could have been somebody no one's ever heard of. Um, but we know that that was the way that at least my family became Presbyterians. Um, and and so it goes, you know, down through the centuries, all these people that we know nothing about. And I'm going to venture that even in a small town like Newton where everybody knows everything about their great-great-grandparents – Most of you still don't know much about who taught your great-grandmother in Sunday school. You don't have a clue. It was somebody, though. It was somebody who was careful and faithful. And that's the point that I want to pull out of this, that Philip, whichever Philip this was, was faithful and and, um, healed all these people and caused great joy in that city. So much so that Peter and John go down to investigate. 
What's going on in Samaria? How could that be? And they go to check it out. And so, um, so you, we see these things happening, and that's a good thing. So ponder that today. Ponder who it is that um, taught your ancestors and their ancestors and on back, who it is that preserved the faith for you. And have a great day.